Uh, Chris Chinock here at ITSIC 2013 for Display Central. I'm with Mike Brown, the general manager of SA Photonics. Hi, Chris. Hi. Nice to see you again. Yes. We, we met um, actually at SID back in May uh, where you showed me the SA30 headset. We'll show you that later. Uh, and you're going to show me actually some new devices that you've developed for the show here today. In particular, let's talk about this, um, this dual ocular uh, helmet mounted display. I think it's called LARS. That's right. L for low cost uh, automatic aug augmented reality. Boy, I'm getting <laughs> tired at the end of the day here. Low cost augmented reality system. Tell us about it. Okay, yeah, so you can uh, meet Lars here. This is a system that was invented for the uh, Marine Corps via the Office of Naval Research. And what they're trying to do is allow the Marines to train anywhere in the world for a very tough mission, which is the JTAC mission. They're calling in fire in a remote location. And right now it's really hard because they have to go to one place in the world and train. And they'd really like to be able to train anywhere they are on the battlefield. So Lars allows them to use an augmented reality system and bring in virtual aircraft, put out virtual targets on the battlefield, and then see if they did their job right. And if not, then train them how to do it better, uh, all without having to have them fly all the way back to, to one place in the world at 29 Palms to do it. I was just in the UK at Rockwell Collins. I had a very nice demonstration of a J JTAC simulation system. Oh, cool. So I've gotten a lot more el educated on the whole JTAC scenario. It's a very complex mission. It is. It is. It is really hard to do and costly. I mean, it, right now, the, the Navy, it costs about $30,000 an hour to rent an F-18. So to do any amount of training is really expensive, and it means we can't do it as often as we need to. So this will allow them to train a lot more often. Exactly. What we have here is a Lars HMD, and it is a see-through HMD, which some people call augmented reality. It allows you to superimpose computer-generated or virtual objects on top of the real world. So the Marine will think he's in his normal battlefield environment, because he is. Yep. Um, it is a really wide field of view, about 76 degrees, um, and it's a full color system. Uh, it has a 30 degree overlap, I think you said. 30 degree overlap, exactly right. And it has a visor that you can drop down for ambient light control, so like a pair of sunglasses for it. Um, but we designed it to be low cost and uh, easy for the operator to use. So I, I, I put this on, and we'll talk about the optics in just a minute, but um, it, it, is, it has a very nice uh, field of view. Uh, the symbology you can see is very bright and clear, and you can definitely see it even in this bright trade show environment. You can see the symbology. Now, when you go to some of the, the still photos that are in this, you do have to lower the visor because it doesn't really make a lot of sense to have this, the images uh, in this kind of environment. Uh, but with the visor down, they're crisp, they're clear. Um, I can't see any pixels, which is a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> good. That's one of the things we're aiming for. Um, actually, uh, one of the things that we're finishing up this contract with ONR is actually increase the brightness of this. So we're going to have uh, a Gen 2 and then a Gen 3 in about six months, and that will be able to be used in an outdoor environment without even needing a visor. So uh, they just want a progression to show kind of uh, that you can do this, and then we'll fix the brightness as we get uh, further on down the road. But they've already used this to to good extent in indoor environments, and uh, their operators seem to really like it. Yeah. Now, so let's talk about the optics a little bit. Um, now, it should hold up this other little module here, which is the, the basis for this, uh, the optics here. Yeah. So this uses the uh, wide UXGA resolution uh, Imagine OLED micro display. That's right. And um, uh, as it was explained to me, make sure I get this right. You've got the, uh, the OLED on the top here. You've got some combining or re re refracting optics in here. And then you've got a prism reflector here, and then a corrector optic on the backside, which corrects for the, the prismatic uh, effects to be able to do the, the see-through, correct? That's right. You uh, want to come work for me in design optics? <laughs> so I don't know what else to add to that. You got it exactly <laughs> right. Um, the idea here, what we really wanted to do was to make this so it, it the operator either looks through here or sees the rest of his environment. There's no, not a lot of structure to block out the outside world yeah. um, because that was key to them. They needed to see guns. They needed to see things in uh, joysticks or laptops or stuff like that, and they couldn't have something that blocked out their eyes like a lot of virtual reality type displays do. Right. Now, this is also going to be offered in a, with a, a non-see-through version, and, and you had a demonstration over here of a monocular version. What's that for? Uh, so the non-C3 version is a way to make a really nice, compact, wide field of view display. Um, if, you, if you see uh, that device, it's maybe half the size of this. You can mount two of them on an HMD, and it makes a really low-profile HMD. So that's what we call it, the low-profile HMD. We're really innovative with our names here. <laughs> <laughs> It's what comes when you work in the military too long. Everything gets an acronym. Um, 
So that, that HMD will be a low cost HMD. The optics are injection molded. It makes them very, uh, very affordable. And you get high resolution and wide field of view as well, which is kind of in the holy grail of HMDs. You want high res, you want wide field of view, and you want low, uh, low cost. Yeah. Now, do you, uh, you want to sell the full HMD as a, as a system, or will you sell this module to other folks who want to create their own solutions? So we're looking to make partnerships with other companies as well. Uh, we'll sell the uh, HMD, we'll sell modules, or we'll work with a company to design something specific for what they want to do. Okay. So being a small business, we can be very flexible about what kind of deals we, we strike and you know kind of how we work with you. And, and have you thought about pricing for uh, a headset that would have two of these, for example, like, uh, like this the Lars module here? Yeah, so the, um, the key thing from the Marine Corps is it could not be an expensive HMD. And so in production prices, we're looking at ten to $15,000 in HMD, uh, which for a wide field of view see-through HMD is uh, almost an order of magnitude less expensive than what's out there today uh, for that kind of performance. Um, so I uh, think we've been able to achieve that goal, and production will be able to achieve that goal for sure. So this is a phase two SBIR for this uh, the Lars program. When when will it be done? When will you be able to start production? You think? So we'll finish the phase two uh, program in June, I think, June or July of next year. Of next year. Okay. Yep. Uh, but we we actually have everything put together that we can start building these now for people in low in low volumes. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you, Chris Chinook for Display Central.